it really does have to be acknowledged that the work that the cyberpunk community, the modding scene has done with this experience is remarkable. Some of the creations are just things that I really hoped would be in the base experience, such as a flying vehicle mechanic. Just honestly so much fun with that and it really is going to be interesting seeing how this game evolves in the future at least just on the modding side so props to the modding team keeping this game alive and thriving they've done a great job but for much of 2021 and 2022 there's been a lot of questions and conversation surrounding the future of cyberpunk 2077 that is largely because cdpr has been rather quiet about their future plans with this game before launch obviously there were various promises made and it seems much of that has been blown Blown up. Earlier in 2022, CDPR's CEO Adam Kaczynski did reveal that the last significant patch or update for the base game would be coming later in the year. He had also revealed that their marketing for the Cyberpunk 2077 expansion would begin towards the end of 2022, with a release sometime next year. Based on the careful wordplay by CDPR's executives, we also started to understand that Cyberpunk 2077's post-launch support had been changed, with the original multiplayer plan scrapped and likely only one expansion coming. This makes sense considering we're nearing the two-year anniversary of Cyberpunk's release, with CDPR spending much of that time fixing the base game, and it's quite clear management very much want to soon focus solely on the next Witcher installment, which means some of the original time-consuming plans had to be scrapped. Regardless, this is what we've known in an official capacity about the game's future, which really isn't much. Fortunately and unfortunately, I suppose, there had been many unofficial leaks indicating what was ahead. This included a transmog system, which was discovered hidden in the code of patch 1.5. Almost the entirety of the story expansion that's coming next year was accidentally leaked by CDPR, with the DLC seemingly focusing in on a new storyline for V set in Pacifica. We talked about this in a video a few months ago. Then of course there were the free DLCs, with only half of them being thus far released. Last year, data miners discovered exactly what was planned, and with each new batch it had has confirmed this list to be accurate. What is left according to this leak are various new weapons, some that have been accessible through PC console commands for months. There was also a few new gigs, which again have been accessible through PC console commands for quite some time, and additionally one of the lead developers on Cyberpunk 2077, Pavel Sasko, accidentally leaked work on one of these new gigs during a recent stream when he showed his computer screen. But based on the data mines of these new gigs, one of the gigs will be called Concrete Cage Trap set in Kabuki, two gigs called Nasty Hangover and Desperate Measure set in Arroyo, and a gig called Hothead set in Japantown. There was also a free DLC item codenamed Monster, which players couldn't quite figure out, and last but not least, a New Game Plus mode, a feature that fans have been dying for, and unfortunately, New Game Plus still isn't coming right now, as confirmed by CD Projekt Red on Twitter just the other day. So that is largely what we've known about the game's future. Conversation has been swirling for months about this content and when it might arrive. CDPR has been taking a No Man's Sky-like approach with going radio silent until they have something to share. And yes, finally they do, with our most extensive look at the game's future now here. Honestly, the timing of this isn't all that surprising as on the development branch of Steam, CDPR has been a lot more active recently testing things, and with the Cyberpunk Edge Runner series nearly here, CDPR obviously has wanted to launch new content alongside the Netflix anime's release release, with of course some tie-ins happening, one of which a new Edge Runners themed jacket being featured in the marketing for today's Night City Wire reveal event. So. I want to now dive into this Night City War special event, and we're going to go towards the end, which we got our first look at the expansion Phantom Liberty. Game director Gabe Amantangelo also revealed a couple of little interesting details. He confirmed that there will be a new cast of characters introduced here, and of course V will come in contact with them inside a new location within Night City. Even based on this footage, it's pretty obvious what this location is. It is the Combat Zone, which is supposedly going to be a new district set in Pacifica. And also following this little teaser trailer that we got for Phantom Liberty, a video message from Keanu Reeves was shown, and the Hollywood star revealed that he will be reprising his role as rebel rocker boy Johnny Silverhand for Phantom Liberty, which is a little different than what a lot of us had expected based on that leak, because there was indication that he was not going to appear, and there was going to be some story reasons for why he isn't. But if you don't know, Phantom Liberty will be taking place before the endings of Cyberpunk 2077, so this isn't a post-ending story for V. There is supposedly going to be some 
some new endings or at least one new ending introduced so this will be a pretty sizable expansion and from this teaser it again does confirm much of that story leak expansion that came earlier this year with this phantom liberty teaser trailer i'm not going to get too detailed here but you can see v obviously entering the front of the combat zone there's a lot of variety here in terms of how these regions look it looks like there's a new hub area inside the combat zone and we of course also see that the president of the new usa that is going to be a major focus for this getting them out of the combat zone after their ship crashes and v obviously is going to be enjoying a lot of chaos as they go about that and that is really all we can take away from this trailer at this point there isn't too much here but again this is coming in 2023 and here's the big kicker this will only be available on next-gen consoles and pc cyberpunk 2077 moving forward it seems like cdpr has made the decision that last gen is out and new gen is the sole focus which again i've been saying this for months now probably over a year that should have been the case for the entire experience as this game really should not have launched on the xbox one and playstation 4 it really could not handle that hardware but good decisions now are being made and and this allows cdpr to do some stuff that they can't do on last gen hardware now besides phantom liberty that was not the only thing that was revealed during this new night city wire event special we also got some information and the release of patch 1.6 again to the surprise of very few it was revealed that players will also be able to have the chance to don the jacket worn by david martinez the anime's protagonist from edge runners and wield a shotgun used by another character from the show alongside edge runners inspired items the update are for patch 1.6 also brings a swath of features to the gaming including a clothing transmog system, again, we talked about that earlier on in the video, cross-platform progression, that's awesome to see, playable Roach Race minigame arcade cabinets, and much more. Those were the highlights of patch 1.6, but there is so much more that was revealed, and the patch notes actually are out now. We're going to go quickly down through it. So the additional content that has been added, wardrobe. Wardrobe allows you to change the appearance of your outfit without changing your armor stats, pretty much transmog. You can create up to six outfits using the pieces of clothing you own by accessing the wardrobe in any of these apartments and safe houses and then switch between them in the inventory panel awesome to see we also have three new gigs added again these are the ones i mentioned earlier they've been in the game's code since day one concrete cage trap desperate measures nasty hangover not going to go through them or talk about them as i'm sure most of you want to experience it yourself and there are a bunch of new weapons added again most of these have been in the game's code for a while kappa a smart pistol i think i had some gameplay earlier on in the video of that the senko lx a tech submachine Machine gun, hypercritical iconic precision rifle. This is obtainable in the gig concrete cage trap. The VST 37 power shotgun. The M870 HB power light machine gun. The QB power assault rifle. Again, I think I have some gameplay throughout this video of those weapons. But there are also some new melee weapons. There is the neurotoxin knife plus iconic variant blue fang. The punk knife plus the iconic variant headhunter. The claw, which is an axe, a razor machete, and cutomatic, a chainsaw. And now this is the big addition that actually I'm extremely excited to see cross progression it's a feature between platforms your latest saves will be automatically uploaded to the cloud so you can continue where you left off easily on other platforms awesome to see that here and then the cyberpunk edge runners content added some secrets related to the cyberpunk edge runners anime series to be discovered in night city including new equipment and new photo mode features so that integration not very surprising to see but awesome to see some additional content of that anime as I believe there is also also going to be some cyberpunk 2077 characters making an appearance during that anime so check out that if you are really deep into this cyberpunk lore and universe and then the arcade game roach race you can now play a brand new mini game using arcade machines located in night city including the ones in the north side japan town and the glen departments climb the leaderboards to earn special prizes including cash and items if you're enjoying roach race in cyberpunk 2077 check out the mobile version for android and ios and hopefully these mini games continue with cyberpunk 2077 moving forward especially with the expansion i would love to see some new races and stuff to at least keep you in this world because that is one of the major things that this game is right now missing now moving further into these patch notes some of the big changes that have been made the surgeon falla stiff 
The weapon will now have a new iconic effect, increasing damage when hitting NPCs in the face. That is that weapon that you're thinking of, that I'm not going to say because it may get the video demonetized. It will also have a chance to stun enemies with strong attacks. Game pads will now be constantly vibrating while holding the weapon, which is kind of funny. The O5 sniper rifle will now have a new iconic effect, causing bigger explosions that can light the targets on fire. The more enemies are burning, the bigger are the buffs the player is getting to critical chance and reload speed. It will now come with a unique scope and require 20 body to equip. The divided we stand assault rifle will now have a new iconic effect. Bullets will now have a greater chance to miss the target with a chance to explode into biohazard clouds. Biohazard clouds are guaranteed to poison nearby enemies. The Yinglong submachine gun will now have a new iconic effect. The chance to cause EMP explosions has been significantly increased. Clip size has been increased to help wreak havoc with EMP explosions. And they also did remove the scope slot from tech precision rifles, which is a little disappointing, which uh, if you don't know, these weapons include the M179 Achilles and Widowmaker. Now, there are some new perks, the poison perks, corrosive poison and critical antidote, which is on the ninjutsu skill tree, replacing Hast and the inevitable and neurotoxin perks respectively. Obviously, throughout this, I don't think I need to mention this, but there is a bunch of changes that have been made to the bugs and the glitches that are in the game. CDPR, again, have been fixing a lot of that within this update, but of course, there's still remains some as I've seen people complaining about certain quests still being bugged out. That is just the reality that we've had to come become accustomed to with this experience. But still again, they have addressed a lot of other issues that players have run into. Now with quests, they added more secrets in Night City to be discovered by players. Due to some technical challenges, this change isn't available on the previous generation of console. I think that's just going to be the, the thing to expect moving forward, especially as we get closer to Phantom Liberty's release, whenever that happens in 2023. Now with the open world, they added the polycarbonate nano weave techie harness, outer torso piece from the techie set, as loot obtainable in the world. They also added the lightweight hardened rubber media steel toes, media set shoes, as loot obtainable in the world, and they readjusted the conditioning of some radio news related to gigs. As a result, there should be more radio news played in game, which is great because it can get a little repetitive. Hopefully this means that there's a little bit more variety with the news that's going on as we explore through the world. Now the UI, they added the item preview so that's possible to see an item on V before you buy it. Again, this is a great quality of life feature, something that a lot of people really had hoped to see around day one. Now visually, the neon rims on bikes now come in different colors, and they added new hairstyles in the character creation. And this is a console-specific change, but they added a new performance mode for the Xbox Series S, which can be enabled in these settings. Uh, FPS is aiming at 60 and 900p with dynamic resolution scaling in 800p to 1080p range. And then this is something that should make the modding community extremely happy. Uh, Red Mod, that is going to be more modding tools for the cyberpunk community to play around with. And yeah, it's just great to see that CD Projekt Red is understanding the value of the modding community because as I said at the start of this video, the things that they've created with this experience is truly remarkable and giving them more tools to create is just a great move by CD Projekt Red. Now we did get some other updates on the future of this game. While patch 1.6 seems to be the last substantial update of 2022, CD Projekt Red also detailed some big changes likely coming sometime in 2023 in new updates. And yes, this does include a new overhaul to the police system and vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle combat. We're, remember I was talking about, we're kind of uh, overhauling some systems and laying the groundwork for, for, for future stuff. Hugely requested feature from the community is coming up, and that is a complete overhaul to the cop system as well as vehicle-to-vehicle uh, -vehicle combat. Uh, it gives you a whole new feel and dimension and immersion to the city and enjoying Night City. Um, really excited about it. Uh, watch out for Max Tech. Uh, there's only so much I'm allowed to say right now because it's a future update. <laughs> uh, but we're doing a bunch of stuff in future updates. New kind of uh, gameplay loop for Melee, a bunch of new actions in the, in the perk tree, more uh, cyberware feeling cyberware, a lot of fun things that the team really kind of wants to get out there to the community and working hard on. All right, uh, you said that this is the last major update for uh, older gen consoles. Can we expect any smaller updates and tweaks in between? Definitely, there's gonna be some smaller updates, um, primarily focused on the tech support to keep it all running smooth. So indeed, there are some exciting things on the horizon for Cyberpunk 2077, whether that be Phantom Liberty, the expansion coming in 2023 to next gen consoles and PC, or these smaller updates, which will include some much anticipated features, such as a 
an overhaul to police systems and vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle combat. CDPR also made mention that there's going to be some new melee combat perks coming in the future, as well as some new cyberware, which, yeah, some of this has been possible for a while through mods, but seeing an official uh, introduction of these features into the game will be something that I think a lot of players, especially console players, will appreciate. But I have played around with patch 1.6 a little bit. I think on PC it's only like 12 to 15 gigabytes. I know Xbox, it's like 40 or so. It varies depending on what platform you're playing the game. And yeah, the gigs add like an extra 10 minutes. The, there's smaller side missions with some interactivity, some options to go about it. Nothing too, well, it is a reason to boot up the game. Obviously, I think some people probably rightfully will wait to take on these gigs because they are smaller pieces of story content until next year when Phantom Liberty releases, when you have all of that content all together. But if you are dying for some cyberpunk content and wanting to jump back in, there is a reason to jump in right now, with indeed some new smaller activities to take on. But the weapons, they do feel fresh. There are some adjustments, again, to some of the ones that I talked about earlier on, such as the O5 sniper rifle, which I believe now I cannot access because I only have 15 body and you need to have 20. But there's also some other changes made to the world. It, it feels like it's performing a little bit better, but there are more glitches, like the Roach Race, that arcade game. First thing I did was load up and uh, there's no options for buttons and uh, I have to actually manually close the game out to get the game to continue on. So that is a bug. I've been seeing some other players reporting it on Reddit. So unfortunately, maybe that's related to the mods that I had or have. I'll have to check that out. But currently that arcade game does not work for me. But yes, I have checked out some of the other content, um, such as the new wardrobe function. That is awesome. Love transmog. The ability to preview clothes at a clothing store is an awesome quality of life improvement. And now at Ripper Docs, you can actually fully change your character's appearance. Just love that as well. A lot of quality of life improvements here. Some of them very, very much needed. And over the course of the next couple of days, as CDPR even hinted in the patch notes, there's all kinds of secret changes. It'll take some time to discover all of them. But yeah, this is yet another step forward for Cyberpunk 2077. Obviously, I wouldn't say it's as substantial as the update earlier this year in which we got the next-gen update. But indeed, there is a lot here, especially for newcomers, those who have not experienced this game. This is probably, again, the best time to jump in. Obviously, there are still issues with this experience. It's never going to be the game that everybody truly envisioned it to be, but I do love the additions that CD Projekt Red continue to give to this experience, and I'm looking forward to 2023 with uh, hopefully a decent amount of new content coming. But anyway, patch 1.6 is out. We also have some updates on the future of Cyberpunk 2077 via CD Projekt Red. What do you make of all this? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, but thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video, or if you found any informative value, and make sure to follow my other social media accounts for updates on new videos. Links are always down in the description below. I'm most active on Twitter, giving opinions on news that I do not always get into video form, so do make sure to follow me over there. Also, check out my Discord for all sorts of discussion on games. And again, thank you for joining. Consider subscribing for more videos like this, and I'll see you later.